admit it or not, but I think you're not just about to answer this amazing question, you're about to conduct a symphony of knowledge. Each correct note brings you closer to harmonious finale of success. You're presented with three triangles. Each triangle has four numbers inside. The numbers are across three triangles, two, three, and four, then five, six, and seven. Hey, easy to detect the pattern, right? And then at the bottom, each triangle also has numbers. I'll start from the left. One, one, two, zero, three, and then comes the missing number, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, zero, choice B, one, choice C, two, and last but not least, choice D, three. Do you think it's a tricky question? Well, I kind of agree with you. But remember, you are not navigating this path alone. And I'm here to help as well as other subscribers on this channel. Whether you're a problem-solving expert or a newcomer, I have faith in your capabilities. Take a moment to gather your thoughts, tap into your imaginative side, and let's triumph over this challenge together. Your solution is almost ready and is definitely within the reach. Are you ready with your solution? Let's proceed so we can compare the answers. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist and I tried to trick you. I hope you didn't fall for it. The numbers here are calculated inside of each triangle, not across the triangles. In fact, the pattern here is that multiplication of top two numbers plus the increment equals the value represented by the bottom digits. Let's look at the example. For example, in first triangle, the numbers 2 multiplied by 5 plus 1, 1 is the increment, equals 11. In the second triangle, increment will be increasing, so instead of 1, it will be 2. 3 multiplied by 6 plus 2 equals 20. So the missing number can be calculated as 4 multiplied by 7 plus 3 equals 31. So the missing number is 1. And the correct answer here is choice B, 1. <sighs> Let's face it, cracking this particular question is like teaching a giraffe to limbo. A tall order, but once you bend your mind around it, the success is a real stretch. This question might be secretly measuring our ability to handle mental acrobatics to deal with unusually looking shapes. Speaking about shapes, you're presented with four shapes, and three of them are very unusual, and you need to determine which shape has the longest perimeter. Your goal is to select the answer out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. You feel like you stumbled upon a tough task? Well, you are not alone in this journey. I feel exactly the same way. But whether you're a problem-solving veteran or a newcomer, I believe in your capabilities. Take a moment to reflect, tap into your creativity, and let's tackle this challenge together. Your answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready with your solution? If you need a little help, gear up for the explanation. Together, we'll unravel the complexities of this question. I will ask you for a favor, though, and specifically to share your thought process in comments. Your insights might hold the key for all of us to learn and improve. To solve this challenge, let's look at some important considerations. You might have noticed that all shapes here consist of the same square building block. But because shapes are so dramatically different, perimeter of the shape can be calculated in two different ways. The first way is to calculate the total length of the boundaries. The example here might be shape C. And the second way to calculate the perimeter might be sum of length of all of the sides. An example of the shape might be square, which is represented by shape A. Because the squares are all the same, we can assume that we can use square as one unit in the calculation. For example, the rightmost side in the shape C could be calculated as four units, and the rightmost side in the square would consist of three units. To calculate the perimeter of shape A, we need to sum up both of its sides and multiply it by two. Three plus three in parentheses multiplied by two equals 12. Perimeter of shape A can be measured as 12 units. Now let's look at shape B. Here we need to manually count the boundary squares. Let's do it together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, and 20. So perimeter for shape B consists of 20 units. Same thing is for shape C. Please verify my math, and if I made a mistake, post it in comments. But shape D is different. Let's do the math. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21, and 22. Which means that the shape's D perimeter is the longest, with 22 units. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's dive into an amazing cognitive assessment test question that not only enhances your analytical abilities, but also improves your valuable problem-solving skills you can apply to solve real-life problems. You're presented with three squares, and you need to determine which square comes next. The next square should be selected out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Well, after close examination of all the choices, I think I got my answer. And I'm ready to unravel the problem-solving techniques together with you. I also think I have a tip for you on how to solve these types of challenges. And obviously invite you to share your brilliant ideas on how to solve it in comments so we can all learn. Our goal is to get to the solution in four simple steps. Let's start with the step one. In step one, we need to analyze the original sequence of squares to find the pattern. Let's take a close look at what we have. Even though all objects are squares, the two squares are 4 by 4, and the third square is 5 by 5. We also can see that all shapes have alternating colors. But you can see that the first shape starts with the darker square in the upper left corner, and the second square starts with the lighter square in the upper left corner. Now it's time to go to the step 2. In step 2, we need to visualize the final shape. Based on what we've just learned, our final shape should be 5x5 five five in size, with alternating colors, and should have a lighter small square in the upper left corner. There are two choices that match this option, choices B and C. Let's jump to step 3 and eliminate the incorrect options. Let's closely look at options B and C to examine options that are incorrect. As you can see, the option C is incorrect because the choice D2 is the extra dark object, which creates a cross. And this leads us to step 4, where we need to verify our answer. Once we've determined that what we believe is the final shape, let's double-check it by comparing to the provided choices, and ensure that it matches the pattern and colors to complete the shape. As you might have guessed, the correct answer here is choice B, because it matches all the criteria and continues the sequence. And now your time to radiate has arrived. I have full confidence that you will shine with your brilliance right now by solving this challenge. You're presented with three unusually looking shapes. The first shape has number 17 in the middle, numbers 7, 3, and 4 in small circles, and numbers 5, 10, and 2 inside the large circle. The second shape has number 16 in the middle, numbers 4, 1, and 3 inside the small circles, and numbers 3, 12, and 4 inside the large circle. The third shape looks more interesting. It has two numbers missing, but the numbers in the small circles are 7, 2, and 5, and the other two numbers that are present are 6 and 3. Your goal is to calculate two missing numbers and select them out of four possible choices. Choice A, 14 and 21. Choice B, 16 and 23. Choice C, 18 and 25. And last but not least, choose D, 20 and 27. It's all about you now. Solve the challenge, then drop your solution in comments. I am curious to see what you will come up with and ready to offer feedback. Thanks for being part of this, and best of luck tackling this exciting challenge. Prepare to tackle this intriguing assessment test question. Designed not just to test your mental math abilities, but also to foster your analytical skills, which you can use in the day-to-day -day life. You need to determine the missing number, which is located on the top of the pyramid. The other numbers in the pyramid are 8 and 28 in the second row, 4, 4, and 7 in the third row, and 3, 1, 4, and 3 in the fourth row. 
you need to calculate the missing number and select it out of four possible choices. Choice A, 26. Choice B, 30. Choice C, 32. And last but not least, choice D, 36. Let me give you a hint. Consider that I might be trying to mislead you by the way I present the information. Maybe there is another alternative look and how you can look at this data. Are you ready? I think I found my answer and I am thrilled to compare it with your solution. Let's continue so we can examine our strategies step by step. And if your brilliant approach is better or more efficient, don't hesitate to let us know in comments. Remember how I presented the information to you? I started from the top and went to the bottom. But in fact, you need to start from the low level numbers and apply math operations to the low line numbers to calculate the higher level numbers. To confuse you even more, there are two math operations are alternating in the calculations, addition and multiplication. Let's look at the example so you get better understanding. Let's look at the numbers in the bottom left corner. 3 plus 1 equals 4. But 1 multiplied by 4 equals 4. Remember I told you that addition and multiplication are alternating. So the next one would be addition again. 4 plus 3 equals 7. Let's go to the row 2. 4 plus 4 equals 8. But 4 multiplied by 7 equals 28. So to calculate the top number, we need to add 8 and 28 to get to the final result of this, 36. So the correct answer here is choice D, 36. Get ready for a mental rodeo, amigos. I've uncovered a question that's more confusing than figuring out why we park on the driveways and drive on the parkways. You're presented with 4x2 matrix. Matrix has 7 numbers, and you need to calculate the 8th number. The numbers in the first row of the matrix are 3, 6, 1, and 2. And then numbers in the second row are 4, 8, 1, and then comes the missing number which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 2. Choice B, 4. Choice C, 6. And last but not least, choice D, 8. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Take a solo ride through the cerebral challenge, and when you wrangle the solution, rustle up your thoughts and comments. Get ready for some cognitive fun, and when you're done, make sure to post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Good luck solving this challenge. And now, it's time to grab your thinking goggles. This question is so intricate, Sherlock Holmes would need a cheat sheet. You're presented with two diamonds. Each diamond has four numbers inside. In the first diamond, numbers are 8, 6, 2, and 4. And in the second diamond, numbers are 5, 2, 2, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 3. Choice C, 5. And last but not least, choice D, 7. Investigate closely and determine if the solution emerges from the careful observation. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, the key to solve this challenge is to determine the pattern. And to determine the pattern, you need to consider different possibilities, sequence and orders. The flow of calculation may not be the same each time. Take a close look at the diamond that has all the numbers. The pattern here is that the left and the right digits in the diamond represent a single number, which is calculated as a top number in the power of the bottom number. Let's look at the example. For example, the top number in the left diamond is 8, and the bottom number is 2. 8 in the power of 2 is 64. Now let's look at the missing value. 5 in the power of 2 is 25. So the correct answer here is choice C, 5. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this 
and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.